today we are in chapter 12, section 3, Mixtures. What are mixtures? Mixtures is a combination of two or more substances that are not chemically combined. So basically this means that each substance in a mixture keeps its identity. This is because they do not react chemically. For example, we have pizza, which is not only yummy, but it could be used as an example for mixtures. See, you can see the topping on, on the mixture. You can see all the parts of it. For example, the cheese and the tomato sauce do not react. So it is a mixture. Since they are not combined, that means mixture can be separated by physical means, such as filtration, evaporation, and distillation. The components of a mixture do not need to be mixed in a definite ratio. Now, you might confuse mixture with compounders. So, the differences between mixture and compounders are shown in Table 1 from your book on page 214. Mixtures are made of element compounders or both, whereas compounders are only made of element. Mixture, no change in the properties of the component occur, whereas in compounders, the properties of the component does change. This is because chemical reaction happens in the compound. In a mixture, separated by physical means, whereas in compounders, they must be separated by chemical means. The component can be make a mixture in any ratio, whereas in compounders, there have to be a fixed ratio, or otherwise the compound will not form. So what is a solution? Do solution and mixture refer to the same thing? Partially, yes. Solution is an important type of mixture. In front of you, there are three glasses of water. In one of them, we've added mud. In the other, we've added salt. And in the third, we've added sugar. Can you identify which glass has which mixture just by looking at them? Yes, you can easily identify the muddy water, but what about the other two? We can't differentiate between the other two as both the mixtures look just like water. This is because in these two cases, we cannot see the dissolved salt or the sugar particles by the naked eyes. The salt and the sugar particles are evenly disturbed in water, whereas in the glass with the mud and water, we are easily able to see the mud particles suspended and cellulite in the glass. So we can see that there are two types of mixture in the first mixture. Its composition is not uniform and its components are in different phases. That's why you are able to see the different components separately. So this type of mixture which has a non-uniform composition and varying properties is called heterogeneous mixture. It means they are not identical. And the second and the third mixture, the composition is uniform throughout and its components are in single phase and we cannot separate them or see the individual components. So this type of a mixture, which its composition and properties are uniform throughout, called homogeneous mixture. Now in the mixture of the salt and the water, the salt is solute and the water is called solvent. Solute is the substance that is dissolved and salt is the substance in which the solute is dissolved. So solution is a homogeneous mixture, that means the particles are the same, of two or more substances uniformly dispersed throughout a single phase. However, if a substance is able to dissolve in the solvent, it's called soluble. That means it has the ability to dissolve. But if not, it's called insoluble. That means it is unable to dissolve. So, solution can be liquid, gases, or solid. And we have another type of mixture called alloys. Alloys are solid solution in which metals or non-metal are dissolved in other metals. So, solution is made from solvent plus solute. Table 2 on page 215 shows examples of solution. Gas and gas. This means that the solute is gas and the solvent is gas. Example is dry air. Gas and liquid. Soft drink. 
liquid in gas, moisture, liquid in liquid, antifreeze in cars, solid in liquid, salt water, solid in solid, brass. Now about the concentration of solution. Concentration the amount of particular substance in a given quantity of mixture or solution. It can be expressed in gram of solute per milliliter of solvent. So the unit for concentration is gram per milliliter. Let's do the math break. The question is, what is the concentration of a solution that had 35 gram of salt dissolved in 175 milliliter of water? First, write the values. We have 35 gram of solute and 175 milliliter of water. Now the equation for finding concentration is gram of solute per milliliter of solvent. Now we can replace the values. 35 gram of salt per 175 milliliter water. And the answer is 0.2 gram per milliliter. Now it's your turn. Answer this question and comment your answer. Solubility is the ability of one substance to dissolve in another at a given temperature and pressure. The solubility of solid can dissolve at a high temperature or by mixing or by crushing. These three steps can increase the solubility of a solid solute. Beside a solution, we have all the mixtures, for example, suspension. Suspension is also another type of mixture in which particles of the material are more or less evenly dispersed throughout a liquid or a gas. Suspension is not like solutions. You can easily see the particles of the solute, and by passing the liquid or the gas through a filter, the solid particles can be trapped by the filter and separated. Another mixture is colloid. They have colloid have a property between solution and suspension. Colloid is a mixture consists of tiny particles that are intermediated in size between those in solution and those in suspension and that are suspended in a liquid, solid or gas. So basically the differences between solution, suspension and colloid shown in this table. That's it for today guys. Make sure to answer the self-check questions and the section review as well. And do not forget to do your homework. Goodbye.